It's KC 101, and it's time for another edition of Saturdays with Seniors, brought to you by FCCB's Tioga County offices, which are located in Wellsboro, Mansfield, and Blossburg. FCCB is proud to sponsor Saturday with Seniors here on KC 101. First Citizens Bank, building better communities for over 150 years, member FDIC, and I'm here with Nancy Dunham. And hello, Nancy. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm wonderful. Boy, Good. before we went on the air, you were sharing some amazing old <laughs> pictures. You were so fortunate that your family took so many pictures along the way. Yes, it helps. It really does help. And you relate to the people so much when you see them. So some of them I knew and some of them I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so neat looking back through those pictures and see what life was like. So can I ask how old you are, Nancy? I just turned... 79. 79 years old. And uh, how long have you lived in Tioga County? I first lived in Tioga County when I was about a year and a half. And I lived here until I was four. And then I moved to Port Allegheny. And then when I met John, we were married in 1968. So I've been here since 1968. For the second time. Here For the second time. You've been all around this sort of region through there. Let's talk about some of your earliest childhood memories. Where do those take you to? Some of the things you remember. Well, my first childhood remembrances are at my grandmother Tubbs in Nelson, Elkland on Barney Hill Road, where my mother and I lived with them while my father was overseas during the Second World War flying B-29 bombers in the Pacific Theater. We couldn't go with him, of course, but we had been with him most of that time until he was sent overseas in July of 1943 when I was six months old. So my mother moved back to her childhood home and she got a job teaching in Westfield because even though married women weren't supposed to teach, once you got married you weren't supposed to teach anymore, they really needed people who could teach chemistry and Latin. And guess who taught chemistry and Latin? So my mother got the job in Westfield, but of course nobody had cars or gas or tires. So they made arrangements with the B&O Railroad that ran through my grandparents' back pasture that they would stop on Monday morning and pick her up in the pasture, take her to Westfield where she taught the week, lived with a great aunt, and then on Friday after school she'd get the last train down, they'd let her off in the back pasture and she'd walk down and we'd all have supper together. So can you imagine a train stopping <laughs> to pick up somebody? 100 ton <laughs> steam locomotive just slow down and pick up the teacher in the middle of the field, huh? Right, but we lived there until my father came home in 1945. So we were there a good two years. While your father was away uh, serving, how often did you hear back from him? My father had always been interested in maps. So he and my mother, they were both avid readers, so they probably read it in a book someplace. But they had superimposed the European theater and the Pacific theater on a map of Tioga County. So instead of all that stuff being redacted, like, you know, people sometimes got a letter and it had nothing in it because it had all been censored out. They were able to talk about my father moving from Little Marsh to maybe Nelson. Wellsboro or yeah. Nelson or something, and she'd know which direction they were moving. So they had sort of a secret language. They the had a secret language, but it was kind of interesting. My mother would get a bunch of letters at the same time, as would he, mm -hmm. because he was in Australia and New Zealand. So he would get so. letters weeks, I'm sure, later oh, yes. before they would arrive yes. back. And but she never got the kind of letter that everyone was fearing they would get. He was shot down in 1944, almost 45 and in sight of a Japanese-held island on the raft, they could look and see the Japanese moving from place to place on the island. But the Pacific Ocean is pretty big, and the rescue people had been given the wrong latitude longitude, so it took them a little bit more to find them. But my dad was the pilot, so he was in charge of everybody. So he was shot down and rescued and survived. Yes, and it was written up in the Air Force magazine because it was truly amazing that they ever found them. There's no search things like we no, have now. No, I, they know. didn't have radar or anything. They flew by the stars still. And meanwhile, your mom, right, was the teacher. Right. How long did she stay in teaching? Was she ever your teacher? Oh, yes. I had her in ninth grade general science, which I didn't say a word. <laughs> I just sat there and took notes. <laughs> 
But yes, she taught all her life. She taught for over 35 years. Wow. So what was schooling like back then? What was discipline like if you got in trouble? How strict were things uh, for you in your elementary days of school? You just knew what you were supposed to do and you did it. Every once in a while, as you got older, there were kids that would raise the devil. But basically, I didn't have a choice. My father and my mother were both <laughs> yeah. teachers. My father ended up being the guidance counselor. So in those days, he wasn't a disciplinary guidance counselor. He actually tried to get you in college and figure yeah. out what you were going to do with your life. And his goal was always coming from a small town. Port Allegheny was half the size of Wellsboro. I had 100 kids in my class. And his whole theory as a guidance counselor was since you grew up in a small town, you've got to leave. You can always come back. And his goal was to get everybody to at least enroll in the service or go to secretarial school or something. And then if you wanted to come back, you could always get a job at the glass factories. You know, that's what everybody did. So did it work with you? Did you go move away? I advice? moved away. And then my mother was ill after I graduated from college. So I did come back. Then I moved to Mansfield because I had a job there. And, and where were you working in Mansfield? In the late 60s, all of these government programs came to develop elementary libraries to do speech therapy. So I started out in speech therapy because they needed somebody who was younger and willing to drive the 500 miles a week to the outlying schools. So guess who got that job? <laughs> Me. You. <laughs> <laughs> But I loved it, and the people I worked with were so nice. And then they developed the library, elementary library development, and all of these schools got tons of books. So I had started helping the librarian in Port Allegheny, and then I knew that there was a job in Mansfield, so I took that. And by that time, John and I were dating. So tell me about how you met John. Well, <laughs> this is the weirdest story of all. John and I went to the same college, Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania, but we were never there together. Hmm. We had a mutual friend who had been trying to introduce us for years, and her husband was a traveling salesman, and so they knew Dunham's well. And their daughter had been a Laurel Queen from Countersport, so she had stayed at John's house. And they knew that John had graduated from Allegheny. But he had graduated in 59, and I graduated in 64. Anyway, in 1965, we went to a concert in Emporium, Pennsylvania. We were both in the singing group. And after the concert, we would always go outside and sing around the bus with the people who were current students and any of the alumni who came. So I'm standing there singing away all the common songs and John is standing there beside him with Larry Briggs. He used to work at the men's department. So we're singing away and John looks at me and he says, don't I know you? I said, I, I don't know. Do I know you? He said, I'm John Dunham. I said, well, I'm Nancy Watkins from Port Allegheny. And I said, are you a graduate? And we started up a conversation. And uh, I'm just dying because I do know who you are, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so we round up the conversation. And as we were leaving, John said, may I call you? I said, yeah, that would be fine. So I waited and waited. In the meantime, I had driven back to this friend who now was living in Countersport, and we had a good laugh over. She had tried so long to keep us so we would meet, and we did it on our own. So he uh, called about six weeks later, I think it was, and apologized for not having called sooner. They were in the middle of remodeling the store. I learned early on that I didn't necessarily always come first. Well, business owners are their own sort of style of right, people here. Right. But that's how we met. It was kind of sounds like it was destined to meet. Apparently, people were trying, I mean, one way or another. Yeah, and it was going to happen. So. <laughs> and, you know, I always ask him. He was quite a tease. And I would ask him, even as recently as a month or two before he died last year, I'd say, did you know who I was? He'd never tell me. <laughs> I absolutely could not weasel it out of him. That was his line to get a conversation started? Or whether that was... <laughs> All right, we'll be right back here on KC 101. It's Saturday with Seniors, brought to you by FCCB, Tiger County Offices, which are located in Wellsboro, Mansfield, and Blossburg, building better communities for over 150 years. It's First Citizens Community Bank, member FDIC.